An amazing discovery by NASA to tell you about. The space agency says it has found what it's calling Earth's cousin, the most similar planet to our own they've ever found. In April 2025, a subtle dip in the light of a faint red star reveals something unusual. In the data, astronomers report a potential biosignature from a world more than 100 light years away. A spectral fingerprint of dimethyl sulfide in the atmosphere of the exoplanet K218 b. On Earth, DMS is a gas produced almost exclusively by forms of life, and if this detection is confirmed, it would be the strongest hint yet of biological activity beyond our solar system. The news made headlines around the globe as the James Webb Space Telescope detected the chemical scent of life on a distant planet. In the silence of space, a new chapter unfolds in the search for life. But before drawing conclusions, we must understand the stage on which this drama is unfolding. The planet k 218 b itself. What kind of world could harbor such an enticing signal? Our journey begins with the discovery and nature of this intriguing exoplanet. k 218 b is a distant exoplanet orbiting the cool red dwarf star. k 218 located about 124 light years from Earth in the constellation of Leo. This alien world was first discovered in 2015 by NASA's Kepler Space Telescope during its K2 mission when astronomers noticed the planet periodically transiting its star, causing tiny dips in starlight. From those dips, they deduced the planet's basic properties. Its radius is about 2.6 times that of Earth, and its mass around 8.6 Earth masses, and that places it in the category of a sub-Neptune or mini-Neptune, larger than Earth but smaller than the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. Despite its size, the planet orbits within the habitable zone of its star, the region where temperatures may allow liquid water to exist. A year on k 218 b only lasts about 33 days, which is rather short, but thanks to its close orbit around a dim star, the planet receives roughly the same amount of light from its red sun as Earth does from ours. Its estimated average temperature is about 265 Kelvin, or 117 degrees C, potentially Earth-like, depending on the greenhouse effect. It's worth noting that k 218 b stood out early on due to its location and composition. In 2019, using the Hubble Space Telescope, scientists detected water vapor in the planet's atmosphere. It was the first time water vapor had been seen on a small exoplanet in the habitable zone, a discovery that stirred excitement worldwide. It confirmed that the planet could have a substantial atmosphere containing water a key ingredient for life. This discovery placed k 2 a tb on the map as a prime target for further observations. Could it be an enlarged version of Earth or something more exotic? Soon, all evidence pointed to an entirely new class of planets. Hessian planets. So k 2 a bay doesn't quite fit into the usual categories of rocky Earth-like planets or gas giants. Instead, scientists suspect it may belong to a recently proposed class of exoplanets known as Hishian planets. The term Hishian is a portmanteau of hydrogen and ocean, coined in 2021 by a team at Cambridge University to describe planets covered in oceans and shrouded in hydrogen-rich atmospheres. These worlds are larger and with a higher mass than Earth, potentially around 2.6 times Earth's radius and up to 10 times its mass, yet could still offer temperate surface conditions. k 218 Bay fits this profile almost perfectly. It's been dubbed the leading Hishian candidate. What might a Hishian planet be like? The concept describes a world with an ocean hundreds of miles deep, covered by an atmosphere dominated by hydrogen and possibly helium. An atmosphere like that is much lighter and less dense than Earth's nitrogen-oxygen blend, allowing it to extend farther into space. A thick hydrogen blanket could act as an insulating layer, possibly helping retain oceanic heat. Hishen planets could orbit many stars. Astronomers believe sub-Neptunes of this size are extremely common in our galaxy. Yet for a long time, these mid-sized planets 
were not a focus of study that is now changing. The potential habitability of such planets is prompting astronomers to rethink the boundaries of habitability. According to Niku Madhusandan, an astronomer at the University of Cambridge and lead author of the paper announcing the discovery, such findings underscore the importance of considering diverse habitable environments. Traditionally, the search for life on exoplanets has focused on smaller rocky planets, but the larger Hishin worlds are significantly more conducive to atmospheric observations. In other words, although these planets may resemble many Neptunes more than Earth, they might offer the best chances for detecting signs of life since their dense atmospheres are easier to probe across light years. The idea of Hishin planets has opened new possibilities for our imagination. But to truly understand the nature of Key 2018 b we must study its structure and atmosphere as closely as the data allows. We can infer the internal structure of this planet from its size and density. With a density of about 0.1 plebs per cubic inch, K2018 is neither purely rocky nor a gas giant. The best models suggest this is a layered world. At its center, there's likely a rocky core made of silicates and metals. Above it, pressure forces water into exotic forms, a mantle of high pressure ice and above this solid mantle, there could be a vast ocean of liquid water, if the conditions are right. All of this is surrounded by a dense atmosphere, rich in hydrogen and possibly helium. Essentially, K2A-T-B may be an ocean world with no land, a planet of global seas under a thick hydrogen-dominated sky. Whether or not a liquid ocean exists on this planet depends on the thickness of the hydrogen atmosphere. If the atmosphere is too thick, the water beneath it would be subjected to crushing pressure and heat, possibly forming a supercritical fluid, not a true liquid or gas, but an environment likely hostile to life. On the other hand, if the hydrogen layer is relatively modest, the water layer could maintain conditions more similar to Earth's, favorable to life. The issue was discussed during early research stages. Initial estimates, water oceans suggested that water on K2 18b could exist in a hot, supercritical state without a distinct ocean surface. However, later analysis, especially using new JWST data, indicated that the atmosphere might not be too dense. There are signs pointing to a real ocean atmosphere interface. In other words, an actual liquid water ocean beneath the gas. One of those signs is the absence of ammonia. Presence of ammonia is expected in a hydrogen-rich atmosphere unless it has somewhere to go. A liquid ocean would be the perfect sink for it since ammonia dissolves easily in water. JWST detected methane and CO2 in the air on K218b. But little ammonia, which supports the hypothesis that a water ocean may exist beneath the hydrogen-rich atmosphere. If the ocean does exist, it may be very deep, much deeper than any on Earth, and possibly warm, depending on heating from the planet's interior and atmosphere. The ocean may be hidden under thick clouds, where moist hydrogen-rich air meets the cooler layers of space. As we mentioned earlier, beneath this ice ocean, pressure would eventually cause the water to freeze into ice, potentially preventing direct contact between the water and the rocky core. This has implications for life. Without mineral circulation at the ocean floor due to the ice layer, nutrients could be limited, potentially posing a challenge for any biological activity. Still, life in such a world might resemble Earth's deep-sea extremophiles, drawing energy from chemical gradients or faint filtered starlight from above. In Earth's oceans, microscopic marine plankton, particularly some species of phytoplankton and bacteria, synthesize a compound called DMSP, which they use to regulate their cells. When these organisms die or consume food, DMSP breaks down and releases the gas DMS. 
as a result. Most of the DMS in Earth's atmosphere comes from marine phytoplankton. There are virtually no significant abiotic, non-biological sources emitting this gas into the air in large quantities. Volcanoes and hydrothermal vents, for example, emit various sulfur compounds, but not much dimethyl sulfide. Therefore, on Earth, if you detect DMS, you're essentially detecting signs of life. That's why DMS has been proposed as a potential biosignature gas for exoplanets. It's akin to stumbling upon a campfire smoke in a forest. You'd immediately suspect someone's there because fires rarely start on their own. Moreover, this gas is short-lived in the atmosphere. On Earth, the molecule breaks down under sunlight, typically lasting between a few days and a few years. This means a continuous, active source is needed to maintain a noticeable concentration of DMS. If K2118b really does contain this compound in detectable amounts, it implies that something on the planet is regularly emitting the gas. For astrobiologists, that something could very well be biology. An alien biosphere in a hypothetical ocean, methane. It's also important to note, methane, also found on K218b, is often considered a biosignature in its own right. When detected alongside CO2, in the absence of large amounts of carbon monoxide, because on Earth, methane can be produced by microbes, in the case of an exoplanet, methane could also form abiotically, for instance, through hydrothermal reactions or during the planet's initial formation. So it's not a smoking gun on its own. However, methane plus carbon dioxide together without ammonia is intriguing. Some researchers argue that this combination is hard to sustain without biological sources because methane tends to break down via photochemistry unless there's a powerful replenishing source, which life can be. Add to that the tentative detection of DMS and you get a potentially compelling argument that something biological could be at work. However, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. At this stage, a hint of dimethyl sulfide is far from confirmed and scientists are approaching it with a healthy dose of skepticism. Let's look at why caution is warranted and why alternative explanations and challenges must be considered. Noise. The hype surrounding the possible detection of DMS is tempered by the fact that the evidence is not yet conclusive. According to the researchers themselves, the signal from JWST data has low statistical significance, about three sigma, which means there's roughly a 0.3% chance that the signal is just noise. In scientific terms, three sigma is considered tentative, whereas the gold standard for discoveries is typically five sigma which corresponds to about 0.000003% chance of coincidence. In an explanatory note accompanying the Nature News piece covering this finding, other astronomers pointed out that the team is really pushing the limit of what JWST can do with this detection. Exoplanet observation data is extremely complex. We're searching for tiny absorption features buried in the noise of a very faint signal. The light of a star passing through a thin ring of atmosphere around a distant planet. Instrumental noise. Conclusion. This saga highlights a turning point in our search for extraterrestrial life. For decades, the prevailing mantra was to find the next Earth, a twin of our world with a similar size, orbit, and star type. Q218b is not like Earth in the traditional sense. It's much larger, likely has no land, and orbits a very different kind of star. In doing so, it has broadened the range of worlds that astrobiologists consider promising. Essentially, this distant world's greatest contribution so far is expanding the range of questions we ask about life in the universe. It has shown that our search cannot be one-dimensional. We have to cast a wide net from rocky planets around sun-like stars to many Neptunes around red dwarfs, from biosignatures like oxygen and ozone to more exotic substances 
Imagine a century or more from now, an interstellar probe launched from Earth, equipped with advanced artificial intelligence and instruments, embarking on a long journey to this distant world. As it nears the K2NT-18 system, the probe's cameras capture a blue orb lit up by the ruddy light of a dwarf star, confirming the suspicions of our telescopes. It sees a planet wrapped in thick clouds, with a vast ocean beneath them. Upon arrival, the probe may descend through the dense atmosphere, parachuting down through a sky painted peach by the red star's light filtering through a hydrogen haze. It passes through cloud layers, directly sampling their composition. Fierce winds, far stronger than Earth's, may batter the capsule, but eventually it reaches a vast alien ocean stretching to the horizon in every direction, dark and endless. Overhead, the local star glows dimly, a smoldering red ember, half the size of our sun, casting a copper gleam across the wave crests. As the robotic explorer sinks into the water, it finds a microbe from this alien ocean, confirming that we are not alone. Yet such a mission is far beyond our current capabilities. The distance of 2024 light years is staggeringly vast with today's propulsion systems, and for now, we remain distant observers decoding faint spectra and refining our theories, transit by transit, spectrum by spectrum. We're drawing closer to understanding this world, and until we can send a distant probe, our vigilant telescopes will continue to listen to its whisper that when life speaks, even from a faraway ocean world, we will hear it.